Check, check. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, good afternoon. Welcome aboard the Triumphant. This is the Port of Los Angeles, a major choke point in a global shipping glut. Tour ship captain Eric Combs gets a daily glimpse of how the pandemic transforms shipping and this harbor. We get cargo from all over the world, mainly from Asia on this side of the, of the West Coast. We get auto parts, electronics, teddy bears, ice cream, bananas. Anything that you, that you buy online usually will come to the port right here. Before the COVID crisis, this port was already the busiest in the Western Hemisphere. Now it's dealing with double the cargo since a year ago. Container ships are idling in the ocean for about a week just for a spot to unload. Before the pandemic, you would hardly ever see a container ship anchored up. They come in, they offload, and they go back out. They're just real, they were real quick. There's so many that there aren't even spots to put anchors down into the they, ocean. Yeah, there's not, yeah, they're just drifting. A lot of them just drift <laughs> and, wait, and wait, and they'll drift for days. Pandemic shutdowns disrupted manufacturing. Then, just when retailers began rebuilding inventories, Americans bought even more imports online. This is unprecedented. Yeah, well, they can't get the containers off fast enough. There's not <laughs> enough people to take them off. You have a lot of steps in the process of getting the container off the ship, into a pile, truck to wherever it's going, to the warehouse. So there's a lot of moving pieces. The crane operators, which are specialized skill, those guys take the containers off the ship. They get sick with COVID. It's kind of harder to replace them. So that creates a slowdown at the port as well. The cascading problems forced almost all businesses to scramble, but for smaller startups without big inventories, it presented problems they never predicted. Alejandro Bras and his partner started their company just two years ago. We build and send out a product called Wamplebox to kids all around the country, and Wamplebox introduces them to new cultures and places every month. So it's a monthly subscription box that people expect at their doorsteps. Can you kind of talk through how uh, a traffic jam, an epic traffic jam at the Port of LA affects Wumplebox? When our product is about to be on a boat in China on its way to our warehouse, it's essentially out of my hands. We just had a shipment that took 75 days um, with an anticipated 30 days. It took uh, 75. That was after our first ship got completely canceled. They just <laughs> never showed up to pick up the goods um, because of congestion. So it took two and a half times as long as we thought. Ocean freight isn't really reliable for us right now. We need to air freight everything to make sure that it arrives on time. And that's costing us upwards of four to five times what ocean freight would cost. At the Port of LA, resolving the cargo congestion comes with COVID-19 safety measures and staffing shortages. Gene Soroka is the port's executive director. We've got two billion square feet of warehousing from right here at the port all the way out to the Mojave Desert. That's all overflowing with cargo. Mm. Underpin that with COVID-19, we can't work like we used to. We're working overtime all the time, trying to prioritize cargo for our manufacturers, trying to get the hot products out for ads and making sure our perishable commodities get to market quick enough. What stands out about this particular bottleneck besides the fact that it's lasted longer than most? One word, uncertainty. A once in a hundred year pandemic that most of us simply had to react to. Ross isn't optimistic the congestion will clear anytime soon. Are you having to plan for shipping delays to last in perpetuity? We are planning for this to last at least through the end of the year. We've had to put an enormous amount of resources into simply making sure that our product arrives on time. We've talked with other business owners going through the same issues. It is everywhere. It's impossible to avoid. I would say for small businesses like ours, it's a much bigger problem. It's an existential threat to our company. Now, based on um, the trade imbalance that the U.S. has with Asian countries, namely China, I imagine that we've always seen more full containers coming in than full containers going out. We've always had a trade gap. We tend to import more than we export, and the largest export commodity is air, the air that's in those empty containers that go back to Asia. But really, this trade gap has been widened since the policies of the last administration. Currently, one of these containers to ship it from China to, to the Western United States is about $5,000, and it's $800 to ship it back. It doesn't mean that we don't sell stuff 
to Asia. We do, it's just different, doesn't fit in containers, right? And so uh, a lot of what we sell are agricultural products that are just shipped differently. But the shipping imbalance has been growing over time. And the way economic activity has oriented itself around the world, it's not something that's going to change anytime soon. All these really loaded down ships, does it just show that we continue to be super reliant on China? It shows, you know, that the Trump administration, the rhetoric was often around this idea of decoupling, that somehow we were going to bring back things to the United States, you know, separate ourselves from China. We would run our own economy, they would run theirs, and we didn't have to get along or talk to each other. Um, that's just an incredibly difficult thing to imagine. We know, obviously, the relations are sour, and that's diplomatically, that's on all fronts, right? But does a trade war persist? If you define trade war as we are putting extra taxes, these things called import tariffs, on the things that we buy from each other, that neither of us are doing to any other country in the world, then the answer to that is yeah. We're making it more difficult for Americans to buy stuff from China than it is if you're European or Japanese. And China is making it more difficult to buy stuff from the United States than they, than you know, if their consumers wanted to buy things from Canada or Brazil. So unfortunately, we, we are still technically in a trade war. 